Good morning, everyone. Today we will continue with uh, Kirchhoff's laws. Today's in today's lecture we will talk about uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law. So Kirchhoff's voltage law basically states that uh, the summation of the voltages along a closed path equals to zero. This can be uh, represented mathematically by this sigma, which basically sums the voltages across a closed uh, path. So what's the definition of the loop in KVL? K the loop basically is made of the, the branches that we have discussed in the previous lecture, where we said that our circuit is made of distinguished junctions and uh, branches between those junctions. So any closed path basically defines the loop that we would like to apply the KVL on. So we have two conventions to use uh, in circuits analysis. The first one is called the potential gain and the second one is called the potential loss. In this lecture, we will adopt the potential gain. So let's start first by looking at Ohm's law and resistors. In resistors, we know that the current is always entering the positive uh, from the positive terminal leaving from the negative terminal. Why? Because this is how those resistors are absorbing power. So when they absorb power, they tend to decrease the potential when the current is entering one of its terminals. So it enters the high potential and it leaves from the lower potential. So this is the the current going in this direction. In other words, we have the current and resistors always flowing from the higher potential toward the lower potential. It enters from the higher potential and leaves from the lower potential. So if I take this direction, for example, for my loop, as we will see later on, the loop will have a direction uh, either clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's assume that my loop is in the same direction as my current. Here, in this case, I have the loop is entering from the positive, leaving the negative, which means this is my potential gain uh, convention, which means the voltage here, VR1 in KVL equation would be written as a negative. Why? Because it is losing potential. So my convention is potential gain. Here the gain would be negative. Why? Because it is a loss. We will see this one in the coming slide. So the potential gain approach that we will be using basically, we need at the beginning to uh, adopt a loop, a direction. We need to decide on the direction of my loop. So here in this case, we have taken the loop to be uh, clockwise. So this is my loop L1. It is going clockwise. So if I take now, this is my direction of this loop that is in this case, entering the positive, leaving the negative. This means a loss and potential. In this case, this VR1 would be written as negative in my KVL equation. Now what's going to happen to the voltage source? The voltage source, this is the negative and this is the positive. So it is entering the negative, leaving the positive, which means it has seen a gain in the potential. And in this case, I will write VS1 as positive in my KVL equation. Now, if we try to relate this direction of my loop toward the direction of the current and my resistors, I can conclude that whenever I have the direction of my loop parallel with the direction of my current, I would write this voltage as a negative voltage. Without even having the VR1, I can write it as minus I1 R1. So if I am to write the KVL equation for this loop, if I am to say KVL at loop one, 
then it will be the following. For the voltage source, I have my uh, loop direction entering the negative, leaving the positive. This way, this way I have a gain in, the, in, gain in potential, and that's why I will write this one as Vs1. However, if I now use the uh, potential VR1, then I would write this one because it is entering the positive, leaving the negative as minus VR1 because this is a, a loss in potential. Also for R2, it will be entering the positive, leaving the negative. Also, it is minus VR2. Why? Because it is seeing a loss in potential and my my convention is potential gain. The gain, I will write it as positive. The loss, I will write it as negative. So VR1 is a loss. VR2 is a loss. VS1 is a gain. That's why it is positive. VS2, it is entering the positive, leaving the negative. And VS2 is written also as minus, then this equals to zero. Now, this KVL is in terms of those voltages. Remember that this VR2 is the voltage drop, which is the same as the potential difference. Now, if I am to write the KVL with the current directly without relating it to the, to the voltages, and this is, again, only for the resistors, then I will write it as VS1, right? It is entering the negative, leaving the positive for for the vs1 and now for r1 the direct the, the direction for my loop is parallel with i1 then that's why i will write it as minus r1 i1 again the direction of the current of the loop here is in the same direction of the current here entering the R2, then I will write this one as minus R2, I1, and then Vs2 is minus Vs2 equals to zero. So I can write my KVL equation using the voltages across the resistors, or I can write my KVL equation directly using the current and uh, the resistor. And always, it is the same. So let's see how we can write the KVL equation for this circuit. The, so the first thing you need to do is to distribute the current. Distributing the current, choose the current directions. So here I know, for example, this VS1. I have chosen I want to be in this direction going to take in this direction, I2 to take this direction, I3 to take this direction. This, could, this can be arbitrary. As long as they were not dictated on you, they were not given to you, the directions were not given to you, you can choose the direction the way you want. You are assuming that the direction of the currents are, are this way. Later on, when you do the, the analysis and you find those values, if those values are positive, then what you have assumed, was correct. If those values values were negative, then the assumption or the the actual direction is the opposite of what you have assumed. So now let's look how we can solve uh, and write the KVL equation for this problem. So we have distributed the the, the current. So let's write now the KVL equations for those three loops. We will understand later on why we don't write all the KVL equations for the circuit. We will, when, once we come to the uh, number of the independent KVL equations later on. But for the time being, we have, as you can see, three loops in total. Let's write the KVL equations for those three loops. So the first thing we need to do is distribute the currents the way, we, we have, the way we, we've done. Uh, pick those loops, give those loops the, the the names that you want. I gave them here L1, L2, and L3, right? 
and also decide on the directions of those tubes. I have chosen the directions for those tubes to be clockwise, as you can see. So this is the, direct, the positive direction is clockwise, clockwise, clockwise for all those loops. Okay, so now I need to write the KBL equations. So I can write the KBL equations using the current directly. We have seen that for resistors, if the current par is parallel with the loop direction, then I can write it as minus Ri. If it's anti-parallel, it will be positive. So let's start first with loop number one. In loop number one, we have, this is my loop number one. If I look at uh, VS1, I can see that this is negative, this is positive. I can see that the loop positive direction is entering the negative, leaving the positive. So this means a positive VS1. Now, the loop direction is parallel with I1. That's why I will write it as minus R1 I1. Now, next one is the VS3. I can see that this uh, loop direction is entering the positive, leaving the negative. And that's why I will write it as minus VS3. Then... R3, I can see that the positive direction of the loop is anti-parallel with I3, and that's why I will write it as positive R3, I3. So this is the loop number one. For loop number two, loop number two is this one. In loop number two, the loop is in the loop direction, the positive direction is entering the negative, leaving the positive for VS1. That's why I will write it as positive VS1. It is parallel with I1, so I will write this one as minus R1, I1. It is parallel with I2. That's why I will write it as minus R2, I2. And then it is entering the positive, leaving the negative for the VS2. And that's why I will write it as minus VS2. Now let's look at loop number three. Loop number three, we have, this is the positive direction. It is going clockwise. So let's see the loop number three. Loop number three here, I have this loop entering the negative leaving the positive for vs2 that's why i wrote vs2 as positive i have this loop l3 anti-parallel with i2 and that's why i wrote it as positive r2 i2 i have this loop as anti-parallel with i3 that's why i wrote it as positive r3 i3 and then it is entering the positive terminal, leaving the negative terminal for VS3. And that's why I wrote it as minus VS3. Now, there is a second approach in writing those KBL equations that we call the double indices. The double indices notation relies on giving notations to those nodes. So here, for example, I have B and E. So if I am to call the potential difference or the voltage drop between uh, VBE, then VBE means that the first index is higher in potential than the second index. So this means B is higher in potential than, than E, and that's why I I made the positive toward for the B and I made the negative for the E because B is higher in potential than E. So we always write the first one uh, for the higher potential and the second one index for the lower potential. So in this case, if I am to 
calculate VBE using KVL. I can take this path going from A to B and then to E through the VBE and then to F then to A. This way I have a closed path. This path doesn't have to be physically closed as long as it is a path that includes voltage drops along this path then I can include that path and it has to be from the same circuit as we can see here. So my path here is from A toward B through VR1 from B toward, toward E through VB, uh, VBE and then from E toward F through VR3 and then from F toward A using the voltage source. This way I have a closed path. Again, this path doesn't have to be physically closed. It is electrically closed this way. So if I am now to write the KVL equation for such a loop in order to calculate VBE, remember here I took the direction, the positive direction of this loop to be counterclockwise. And in this case, I can apply the KVL the same way I did earlier, which is basically the, the direction of the loop. If, it's in, if it enters the positive, leaves the negative, it will be written as a negative. So here, 30 would be minus 30. And it is entering the negative, leaving the positive for VR1. So that's why I wrote it as positive VR1. It is entering the negative, leaving the positive for VR3. And that's why I wrote it as positive VR3. Also, it is entering the negative, leaving the positive for VBE. And that's why I wrote it as positive VBE. Then I rearranged to calculate VBE, knowing VR3 and VR1. So the first thing in order to calculate the number of uh, independent equations, which are the useful equation in solving Kirchhoff's laws, is first of all, you need to identify the number of distinguished uh, uh, junctions. So in this case, I have A here, I have B here. Again, this is this A is for the whole thing here. This B is for the whole thing here. And then A, B, and then I have C here between the voltage source here and R2. And then I have the E here between the voltage source PS3 and R3. And I also have the D here. So I have one, two, three, four. I have five distinguished junctions. And then the total number of independent KCL equations would be N minus one. However, here we have to pay attention to A here, what's happening between in A and C and in E. Since those ones are in the same branch, this means the current here is the same as the current here. And in this case, I can eliminate the need for uh, the usefulness for this uh, junction. Also the same here for C. The current here is the same for R2 and VS2. That's why this junction is not going to be useful to me. And the same here for E. I have the same current also for an R3 and VS3. That's why I, this one is not, is not useful to me. So this basically uh, reduced the number of uh, useful equations from 4 to only uh, one useful equation, which is any equation, only one equation would be uh, useful and the remaining would be redundant equations. So I, it will be either this one or this one, both are the same. So this is the equations for the KCL. I have only one independent equation. Why? Because here, the current is the same, which basically eliminated the usefulness of those of those nodes. Now, this is for the KCL. Let's look now at the KVL. KVL equations, 
is basically the independent KVL equations is V, which is the number of the branches minus N minus one. So N minus one is still four for me and number of the branches, let's count the number of the branches. So I have, those are my distinguished junctions. And again, we said we count the components in between those junctions. So I have one here, two, three, four, five, and six. I have six branches between those junctions. I have six branches. So I have here six minus four. This is going to give me two. So I have two independent KVL equations. So you can choose whatever you want. And we said for this circuit, we have a total of three loops. I can either take the, the larger one with this one, or I can take the, the outer one with this one. This makes it two, or I can take this one with this one. Any of those uh, three combinations would give me the two independent KVL equations. So for example, if I am to uh, write the KVL for loop two and loop three, and this assume that here I took two and three as my two independent equations. So based on the convention that we have talked about, to start with the L2 first, this L2 is entering the negative, leaving the positive. So VS1 is written as, as positive. This direction of the loop is in parallel with I1. So this is, is written as minus R1, I1. Again, the loop agrees or parallel with I2. So it will be minus R2, I2. Again, it, this loop is entering the positive, leaving the negative for VS2, and that's why I'm writing it as minus VS2. For loop number three, this is loop number three. It, it is anti-parallel with I2, so that's why I'm, I will write it as uh, positive R2, I2. It is anti-parallel with I3. That's why I'm writing it here as positive R3, I3. It is entering the negative, leaving the positive for VS3, and that's why VS2, that's why it's positive VS2. And it is entering the positive, leaving the negative for VS3, and that's why it is minus VS3. So this is, this is how we write the KVL equations for our circuits. We have this example using the double indices. We need to find the voltages VAE and the voltage VEC. So VAE, we said that the first index represents the high, the, the, the one that is high in potential and the second index represents the lower in potential. So VAE, where is A? This is A, so I will put the positive here and I will put the negative here beside, beside E. And I will choose this uh, loop to be uh, clockwise. So now if I am to write the KVL for, for this loop, so this is loop number, let me call this one L1. So this is KVL at L1. So it is entering the negative, leaving the, posit the positive for the 24. So I will write it as positive 24. It enters the positive for the VAE. Enters the positive and leaves the negative. That's why I'm writing it as minus VAE. 
it is entering the positive, leaving the negative for R4, and that's why I'm writing it as minus 10. This is the voltage across R4. So this is my first equation. I can then find VAE. I can do it through this path. I picked the blue uh, loop. I could have picked the red loop. And in this case, if I want to write the KVL equation for the red one, as you can see, it is going uh, clockwise as well. So it is going through the R1, uh, the voltage source, uh, going through R2, going through R3, then from E to A again. So it's entering the positive, minus 16. It is entering the negative for the 12 volts. So it is positive 12. It is entering the positive, leaving the negative for the four volts. So it's minus four. It is entering the positive leaving the negative for the six volt, so it's minus six volt. It is entering the negative, leaving the positive for the VAE, and that's why it is positive VAE. Then you can find VAE from either equations. Now, what about VEC? What about VEC? So here, VAE equals take VAE to the other side. 24 minus 10 is 14 volt. VEC, VEC. Let's take V, this is E and this is C. Again, E is assumed to be higher in potential than C. So the plus goes here and the minus goes here and now i have taken this path i've taken this path e c d e okay so it's going again clockwise in this case it is entering the positive for e leaving the negative here so that's why i wrote it as minus vec it is entering the positive for the four volt, leaving the negative. That's why it is minus four. It is entering the positive for the six volt, leaving the negative. That's why it is minus six volt. And in this case, VEC equals two minus 10 volt. If I want to write the KBL equation for voltage sources that are connected in series how do i utilize this law to get the equivalent voltage source in this case if this is my total this is the those are, this is the elect, the two terminals for my total uh, voltage then i can use the double indices as well so here i have vab which means a is higher in potential the first index, then B, which is the second index, right? So in this case, if I am to write the KVL equation for this loop, I picked this loop and I decided that this loop is clockwise, then I can write now the KVL equation. This is, this loop is the positive. I want to make it, you know, bigger just to show you. right just to show you so this is red is the same as the that blue however it's just uh, larger and in, in size so this one is entering the positive for the v1 that's why i'm writing it as minus v1 it's entering the positive for v2 it's minus v2 it's entering the negative for v3 it's that's why i'm writing it as positive v3 and then it is entering the negative 
for VAB, and that's why I'm writing it as plus VAB, and then VAB equals two, take the V1, V2, V3 to the other side, equals to V1 plus V2 minus V3, and then I can represent those are three voltage sources connected in series with this equivalent voltage source that is V1 plus V2 minus V3. Now let's do this example. In this example, I know the current I naught. He gave me the current I naught to be two milliampere. And he's asking me to calculate the voltage for this voltage source using KVL, KCL, and Ohm's law. So here in this circuit, we will first start with the information that is given to me, which is the two milliampere. I can start looking at what, how can I make use of this current and solving for my unknown voltage source. Before, you know, proceeding, let's first pick the, identify the junctions that will be used in this circuit. So I should know what are the junctions that I have, just to avoid making any mistakes. So here I have, the junctions are given as, the first one is A, remember, this whole thing is one junction. Right, this whole thing is one junction. Well, this is one of the common mistakes the students do. They sometimes, they sometimes go and say this is one junction, this is a second junction, and this is a third junction, and this is absolutely wrong. Those are electrically called one junction. Electrically, they are one junction. So this is a junction. I have B is a junction. C is a junction. D is a junction and E is my fifth junction. And then we can distribute now the current arbitrary because it did not give me uh, the currents in those branches, except this one, he gave me this one, I nod. But let's distribute uh, those uh, currents the way you want. Then now I can make use of this I naught that he gave me, this I naught equals to two milliampere. I can use now Ohm's law to calculate the voltage drop across the one kilo ohm. Remember, I naught is going downward, which means this one has to be positive, this one has to be negative because in resistors, currents are always entering the positive terminal leaving the negative terminal. So he gave me this current to be two milliampere, then this one has to be positive and this one has to be negative. Then I can now calculate V naught using Ohm's law. If I use Ohm's law, then V naught is one kilo ohm times two milliampere is two volts. Now, after I calculated V naught, I looked at this loop and I said, I have now the voltage here across this resistor. I know the voltage here across this voltage source. So why don't I apply KVL and find the voltage across this resistor, which is the two kilo ohm. And this is what we did. So we picked this loop. We assigned it a direction, positive direction to be clockwise. It could be, you could, you could have chosen counterclockwise. That should be okay clockwise and then we have written the KVL equation for L1. So here it is entering the negative, leaving the positive for V naught and that's why we have written V naught which is the two volts that we have found earlier as positive. It's entering the negative for the six volt leaving the positive and that's why we wrote it as positive six. It's entering the positive for the V2 leaving the negative, and that's why we, we wrote it as minus V2, and then rearranging, we found V2 to be eight volts. Then, now we, we have V2, we found V2, eight volts, 
now let's see what we can what we can do in order to continue solving those missing variables in my circuit remember here that uh, uh, i have calculated now the voltage using kvl right i have the voltage now here and i know the resistor here so if i use ohm's law i can calculate this current i2 so let's do this i2 is entering the positive leaving the negative here so i2 equals to 8 divided by 2 kilo ohm for milliampere so now i know i2 right and i know i1 if i apply kcl at this node at e i can find i6 so let's do this applying kcl at e here basically if we take the convention as i node entering to be negative then the ones that are entering are negative the ones that are leaving are positive i know i naught i2 and i6 all are entering that's why i wrote them as minus 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 then i rearranged and found i6 to be minus six milliampere right i6 to be minus six milliampere so the direction here the assumed direction is going downward however because i6 is because I6 is minus 6 milliampere, actually the actual direction of the current is flowing upward. But that's fine. We can keep it the way it is, uh, knowing that I6 now is minus 6 milliampere. So based on this assumed direction, though going downward, then the V6 should be, this is the plus, and this is the minus. However, when I calculate V6, because I6 is negative, then I'm expecting V6 also to be negative. So if I continue this with the KVL here, then I can calculate. Now, after I found V6 to be minus 12 volt, I am doing KVL in loop number two, Y to calculate the voltage here across the one kilo ohm why because now i know v2 i know v6 now i can count i can find v3 so let's do this applying kvl for this loop then now this loop is entering the positive leaving the negative for v3 that's why I wrote it as minus V3. It's entering the positive, leaving the negative for V6. That's why I wrote it as minus V6. However, it is V6 is minus 12, then it became positive 12. So again, how did we do this? So again, we said that we minus V3 and then minus, right? Entering positive, leaving the negative for V6. So it's minus V6, then entering the negative, leaving the positive for V2. So it is minus, uh, it is uh, positive V2, right? Entering the negative, leaving the positive, and then it's positive V2. This one minus V3, minus V6 equals to zero. Now V2, we know V2, V2 is 8 volts, right? V6 minus is minus 12, and then minus V3, and this is equals to 0. And that's why here I have now V3 equals to 20 volts, right? 12 positive plus 8 is 20 volts. So I found V3. to be 20 volts, I know the resistor, then I can calculate I3 using Ohm's law, right? So let's do this. Then I3 is 20 divided by one kilo equals to 20 milliampere. So now I know V3, 
I know I3, right? What else? What can I do? Then I can calculate I5, right? I know I6, I know I3. Then if I apply KCL here at D, I can calculate I5. So let's do this. We have here for D, I have I3 entering. That's why it's minus I3. I have I have I5 entering. That's why it's minus I5. And I have I6 leaving. That's why it's plus I6 equals to zero. However, when you substitute I6, you substitute it with minus six milliampere, right? So here I have I5 equals two, I6 minus I3, and I6 is uh, here, I3 is 20, so it becomes minus 20, and I6 is minus six, then I5 is, so I found I5. Now I can find the voltage across I5, which I have called V5. Now this direction, this current is pointing this way. Then it has to point, it has to enter the positive, leaving the negative. Don't worry about I5 being negative. V5 will be also negative. But the direction of the arrow has to enter the positive, leaves the negative. So now if I am to write Ohm's law, I know the current, I know the resistor, then this is the current minus, then my voltage with this orientation, V5 would be minus 26 volts. So now I know the voltage V5, I know the voltage V3, I can now find VA. So this is gonna be, KVL, picking this loop, giving it the positive direction, L3, clockwise as well. Then this loop is entering the positive, leaving the negative for V5, so it's written as minus V5, right? Which is, um, and it is minus 26, that's why it becomes positive 26. Now it's entering the negative, leaving the positive for V3, then it becomes positive V3, and V3, I know V3 is 20, so this becomes, stays 20. It's entering the negative, leaving the positive for the VA, the variable VA, then I write it as positive VA, and then rearranging and calculating for VA, VA is minus 46 volts. Now we have uh, three exercises here. In those exercises, we need to calculate VAD and VEB for the circuit. So I will let you do this by yourself, and then we can discuss them later on when we have our interactive session.